Sweet. So, uh, I'm Pato. This is, uh, we're going to be watching Higher Snow Ward versus Razor Weapon. And uh, with me is Barricade. So, tell the people that are watching the stream, who are you? Who am I? Yes, who are you? I mean, who are you as, as far as League of Legends goes? Like, how. As far as League of Legends, like my qualifications? Yeah, it really looks like what, like, you know, like, uh. Right. I heard something uh, about, like, your high ranking player or something. Uh, I guess so. Uh, season one, I placed third in 3v3 ladder, North America. But it wasn't exactly the most competitive ladder. But this season, I got flat in solo queue. And, um, I started a 5v5 team. We're 12 and 2 right now, uh, high 1500s. So it's going pretty well. Nice. Good work. But yeah, so have you so have you been watching the game today? What do you what have you thought of the game so far? Um, actually, a mutual friend told me that someone I knew was playing in the game. Uh, that the other game you didn't cast on uh, Team BP Crunch and uh, Higher Snow so Wars. I, I was hoping they would make it to the finals, but um, but they're playing the third place match right now. So I've only watched the last uh, four matches or so. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, Higher Snow Award, I don't know if you've ever heard of them before, but they've actually played Gopher Wolves. They've gotten second place at a few, um, took third place at Plantronics. Um, their team kind of dispersed, and they've kind of rejoined, and most of the, those achievements were from an online team, but their local team still has a lot of solid players, so they're a pretty formidable team. So Yeah, I, uh, I definitely recognize some of the names. Yeah. Um, Otter, Hank M, and I Fight Bears, especially. Yeah, and uh, actually, normally, I don't know if you ever heard of Texty before, but he... He was normally on their team, but he was in Portland, so with him out on that team, the team would be oh, so very, very play. important. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that team is, is pretty strong. It typically wins a lot of the local tournaments, but Razor Weapon, we just kind of recently formed that. So this is actually the first team time that both these teams have actually met um, at a local event. So it should be, okay. I mean, a lot of players have met before, but first time these teams in their incarnations have met. So it should be a pretty good match here. As we see off the bat, you know, uh, <laughs> Kogma the only ban, but they did not ban Janna, but it looks like Razor Weapon is going to stick with Sona and Vayne. Yeah, I mean, they've been running the Vayne Sona bot lane for a while now. It seems like the last three games or so, and it's been working really well, but I think part of that was because uh, Team Matt Damon, their bot lane AD player, was kind of weak in lane, and so Dexter could kind of run over him. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, now, like, Vayne's weakness, obviously, is going to be in lane because of her short range and her, her low damage. So uh, if... if uh, HRNR reacts properly with a longer range AD, I think, that uh, Dexter could have some issues in lane. Especially looks, with Raka. Yeah, it actually looks like we're going to have to see the same matchup, but just manned by maybe better players. And obviously, if we're talking about really good players, I mean, obviously, Otter would be one of those top AD players, but it looks like he's been playing Ziggs pretty heavily when he gets the chance, so he's been playing their AP mid. Um, normally, last time I saw this team before this tournament, Hank M would be their AP mid, and Otter would be their AD the bottom and Otter, very, very scary AD player. Yeah, they, they could trade still at this point. Um, uh, Amumu is kind of an interesting pick. Um, uh, you don't really see it now with the new meta. There's a lot of invades going on, so I don't know. It's it's decent against Warwick because Warwick's pretty weak in jungle early as well. But I don't know. Um, I feel like Racer Weapons can kind of get away with some early game shenanigans if they want to invade or just try and uh, cripple the mummy in the jungle. Yeah, and you know, actually, the, the actually is a backstory to this. Kabam, the player that was playing Amumu, actually, like, he literally just, like, it's like his favorite character, and he plays in jungle, like, literally all the time that he gets a chance to. So, I mean, it's more of, like, just the player style rather than, like, necessarily, like, it's, like, their grand meta scheme or something. He just really loves yeah, Amumu, it's, so. It's very interesting, and, I mean, I feel like the team comp is really well designed around the, the mummy pick, Vlad, and, uh, Ziggs are obviously both synergized very well with the uh, AoE stun, and uh, double AP in general is obviously the best for AoE comps, and Sivir with the, the AoE move speed is a, a great supplement to that, that team comp as well. Yeah, and so we're actually going to just see uh, Cassim versus Ziggs probably here. It should be very, very strong. It looks like all players are going to keep their respective characters possibly. We might see some switches after the time runs up, but... And uh, this top lane, Gangplank versus Vladimir, should be rather interesting. Vlad has no escapes, but obviously has the pool. But uh, I feel like whichever, whichever laner gets the, the first gank top lane is going to have a huge advantage because it's it's an even lane, but it's not an even lane in the way that you trade CS. It's even in the way that you have an equal chance of winning, but whatever 
whoever wins the lane, they win hard usually. It's very rare that it's just a farm fest. Yeah, so, you know. I'll be, I'll be interested to see how they play that. Yeah, I agree. You know, Razor Weapons jungler is Warwick, and Warwick actually not known for his early gank. He usually prefers to farm up to level six. So, um, if there's any gank top, it'll probably come from Kabam first, I would imagine. That that is true, but I feel like um, Gangplank with his remove scurvy could uh, could get away as well. I, I feel like Vlad and Mummy might not have the burst to take him down, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, Empire does have E, so he can't escape out of those those nasty CCs. So it should be it should be a pretty good matchup for them. And actually, now that we fit the three man, we can reveal the summer spells and talk about them a little bit. You know, Vlad going, uh, he's not going teleport. So we've seen typically from uh, all the last top solos that they've uh, favored the teleport. Instead, Vlad's going to take ignite, heal, and try to just win the lane that way, take that advantage. And Pirates actually going to have the teleport to roam around the map. It appears. Yes, yeah, this is actually um, in the entire tournament. This is the first game I've watched where a top laner doesn't have teleport. Well, should be interesting. The triple summary heal should be interesting as well. Yeah, that's going to be annoying. I know that uh, definitely a lot of uh, kill minded players hate the team heals. It's very good at baiting players, especially when team health team heal first came in back into vogue um, after the CV nerfs. I think that a lot of players like just kind of like skipped it from their mind, and so they kept getting baited into heals. Now it's just like a standard mechanic that you have to keep track of uh, team heal timers and make sure that you don't get baited uh, into horrible situations under turrets and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, both teams have a very strong dragon fight, though, I feel like. Uh, the Sona and Gangplank ult combination can be very strong at 6, especially if he can teleport down, but uh, Mummy and Ziggs, not to mention Sivir ultis, can be quite potent as well around around that time, around level 8, which is usually when the first dragon fights happen. Yeah, and definitely in this new era, this like Ziggs era, I definitely feel that his, you know, his mechanics, his zoning mechanics are so good for dragons, especially if you have... Uh, uh, purple side, but blue side even is like uh, pretty good too because you can just cover so much range with that roadblock and with uh, that satchel charge. Especially, I mean, if you're purple side, you come down, you can block, you know, like the north side just um, with uh, you can stack roadblock and satchel charge on top of each other. And to run past it, it's like uh, <laughs> a really stupid proposition. It really yeah. sucks. And on top of that, you know, you can't actually steal buffs and you can steal dragon too with his ult um, if you time it correctly. It's a little bit hard, oh, but for sure. I it's, mean, it's, it's definitely still a, a big damage nuke. Yeah. I actually, um, Playing as Ziggs, I prefer to be on blue side for dragon fights because uh, if you're purple and you drop your uh, your bombs on the ramp, then you can zone their whole team. But if they decide to commit, they're all coming from one side. Whereas if if you're on blue side and you drop it on the the ramp that leads up to blue buff, you can split them and make some of them hesitate if some of them are coming from river and some are coming from blue. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, but. Again, you know, it's like like you said, dragon fights. Both teams have a very strong dragon fight, but definitely Ziggs. You know, I've noticed watching a lot of tournaments, even high level tournaments. I know the IP, uh, IP Lol they actually highlighted. I think Reginald playing Ziggs at one point uh, against Curse when he was using Ziggs because he was actually stacking um, the the roadblock and the the satchel charge to to basically block, like put them right next to each other to block a whole section of the river. Just kind of zone them out if right. they want to take a bunch of damage. So, oh, and for sure. We are seeing a, a nerf actually ca going to come in from Ziggs. They're going to get a little bit ri rid, rid of a little bit of that slow and uh, damage from that uh, the robot because it was a little bit too much, a little bit too effective. Yeah, and uh, I, I feel like his his words when he described the the changes were were pretty accurate. He he was talking about how they were just toning it down, lowering the mana cost as well as the, the stacking slow and yeah. everything. I think. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of interested. Good change. I was very interested in the new patch, no uh, patch notes because it was there was no like hard nerfs anywhere. It's kind of just like everything was being tweaked for uh, later balance sake, and just kind of like it was like almost they were just kind of like editing some of the champs, like so they could mm -hmm. they could edit them later like easier. So there's no like big sweeping changes, but just that stuff. But I also like uh, the new change to the to the gold and stuff like that. How they're gonna actually give you mana too for junglers. So that's kind of yeah, cool too. Yeah, very interesting. Um, I would expect to see some kind of invade from. Um, RYW here. Uh, I feel like they need to gain some sort of early advantage, uh, and I would especially hope that Cassidy, once he hits level six, starts roaming, and um, they might even want to get an early Oracle on uh, Warwick or Sona to allow him to roam because Cassidy obviously is very potent. Yeah, um, and that's one of the few champions that will be able to gank Vladimir if he can land Silence before pool. They can definitely take him down, especially since Vladimir doesn't have Flash. Yeah, I agree, and I know that Highwind, especially uh, the jungler for Razor Weapon, does love to get it in early oracles. He feels it is a, uh, a quintessential thing. If you know, if you can protect it, obviously it's a big thing if you lose it, but uh, he does like to do that, and obviously with the casting, like you said, 
going to facilitate those roaming games, much like you would for like a LeBlanc or some sort. So I was going to spy this, uh, the bottom of Vave, like you called. And Razor was going to back out of this might come loop back around. We will have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Is a good positioning by HRNR to, to split and watch both the blue side and the red side? Yeah, because I mean, any I mean, any good invade against a Moomoo, again, like you said, slow jungler. I mean, if you can invade him and slow him down a little bit, it really, really hurts his game. But uh, Kabam, um, a, a pretty a veteran player of a Moomoo, though, so he knows how to deal with all sorts of scenarios uh, as a Moomoo. Mm -hmm. He's probably played, I mean, easily played uh, hundreds of games, probably, I, I guess, with a Moomoo, because every time I've seen him in a tournament, he's pretty much playing a Moomoo. But. Yeah. I'm actually very interested by the positioning. The way that they're set up on HRN, or it looks like Diggs is going bottom with Soraka, and they're putting Sivir mid versus Cassidy. actually really like this decision, if that is what they go with. And, you know, actually, higher snow where they actually do like to do these uh, high-level high, uh, high level meta, you know, outthink your opponent kind of strategies. I've seen them do lots of stuff where they send, they've done the two player, they've done two players top, they've done, like, their, their AD and support top and stuff like that against certain lanes, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. put this past them. So yeah, Sivir mid, I mean, I mean, yeah, right on. I mean, get the spell shield and she'll be able to, to basically eat any silences that he wants to use. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Cassidy and almost all of his damage early comes from that Q ability, so if you can hit a good shield on that and just right click him you definitely can win trades with him especially i mean even at six uh Sivir's gonna be one of the few champions that can take him down yeah i mean it's very very smart and soraka you know perfect pair with ziggs because ziggs loves his mana and after that buff she actually gives more mana now so she's even a better pair for soraka and as you can see down here i really do like that something the NH hr enter does that i do a lot uh and when i support i actually will buy that early pink ward to gain this brush advantage you can put it in the brush and cancel out your opponent's wards, and then they can't put another ward in there until your pink ward fades, uh, mm -hmm. which is usually very, very strong. And uh, actually, Team Matt Damon was doing that as well on Soraka. It, it seems like on Soraka, people are more willing to do that than on other supports because you have that this, the sustain. You don't need potions necessarily as much as, say, a Sona or a Janna. Yeah, I definitely agree here. You know, Otter getting a little bit of rest here by Dexter. But like you said, you know, like earlier, I mean, Dexter did take advantage of uh, Team Matt Damon just because, you know, he, and like, like I was saying during that game too, it's like he is one of those players that does sense an advantage and he will press it. So, should we just see how, how Vayne does because he does have that short range like you said and if Ziggs can, you know, the, the weird part is though is that he is bottom here so they're not going to be able to feed him blue as easily and he does kind of throw off that blue but he does. So he's not going to have the cooldown yeah, reduction it, but he will have the It is going to be awkward. Sorry. I wouldn't be surprised to see a switch uh, later on, especially since it appears like Vayne's getting a early advantage here they might they might switch back just i mean Sivir is winning mid but uh you know if if you lose bottom that's not necessarily worth the trade because that can allow um dexter and his team to set up for dragons early if he gets an, a big advantage following especially if he can force otter to go back yeah because the other thing too is i mean ziggs i mean you won't have that level advantage by putting a mid who will have been uh who will have been nerfed by kind of going bottom and you might still have some farm but i mean vein you know the ad typically i mean you want it that's why you want them down there because they don't care about the level so much as much as the farm and here we see an engage on middle onto sivir sivir ignited trying to pick up a kill onto cast him shoot a flash fly. away and should be able to scale with hank m very solid play yeah, here and maybe snipes uh snipe the cast it out with a little boomerang here maybe get lucky but it looks like he's he's wary on cast and he's boss cows backing up Ooh, very very because you need to be careful about his position there by that tower i mean that's actually um, it seems kind of safe by there, but actually restricts your movement uh, when you're against the wall and the tower, so it can make you a little bit predictable to yep, land that definitely can, can aid skill shots coming in. That's good spell shield there. You oh, great spell. lead by Mummy right there. Actually yeah, picking up high wing. Yes, and Boomerang Blade oh, actually comes through, almost blood? picks up, yeah, and will be wow, first blood onto high wind, and almost pounces and picks up a double oh. kill. That red buff almost picking up boss cow there. So and great Holly, play by uh, Hank M. You see that, uh, now that Ziggs has picked up some levels, they're starting to push in and create some trouble for Vayne and her short attack range. Yeah, so that's very good. So basically swing around. I, I got to put on Otter. He does know how to play bot lane pretty well and very, very solid uh, player um, to have in this kind of position. Oh, wow. It looks like they might even take mid tower here. Sivir definitely one of the top pushers in the game. Oh, yeah. Easily, and it looks like they will take it really early. And this is what they're going to do with this because it does open up uh, farm uh, for mid, but at the same time, it's not the same kind of farm um, that you would normally see. If, like, if, say, you kill bottom turret really quickly, it's not it's the same amount of distance, right. a little bit if, shorter. Yeah, if there's if there's any tower you want to get as early as possible, it's mid lane because top and bottom they can you know they can freeze the lane down by the other tower. But if you take away that mid tower, that gives the other team so many different paths 
that they can take with no vision for you. So that that is a big deal at five minute first tower. So yeah, I think Warwick's you know just kind of waiting uh, to get to six so he can go and get out and get on the board, get some ganks in there because he kind of was making his presence known mid, but that obviously did not work out very well for them. Giving up double buff to uh, Hank. Yeah, okay. that was really a great, great counter gank by the the Amumu there, and the positioning was really fantastic. I think he was actually stealing wraiths, and then he just swooped in with a bandage toss. And again, you know, this is kind of like how I was pointing out. You know, <laughs> uh, actually, this, I don't know if oh, you see it, but yeah. Sivir's uh, boomerang but actually looks invisible on my screen, or I can barely see. I can only see like the the shadow effect from it. And almost picking up pick up high when he does yeah, pick it up with the, the red, red buff. buff. Yep. Take a lot of his boss cow actually kind of probably could turn on and took him, but didn't stick in there. Actually ran away. Kind of curious. Was, uh, he, has no, he has no six though, so I don't know if he was going to catch him. Nope. Good silver will be there. Razor weapon. Safe. Yeah, looking a little sloppy here. Just kind of probably befuddled by this uh, the switch up by High Risk No Reward. Yeah, it definitely seems to be catching them off guard. And top lane, um, GP used his teleport pretty early, picked up that uh, vamps up there, and they could help them out a lot just to be able to keep up and sustain with the blood. Yeah, and he's, he's doing pretty good in CS2 up here. Really low on mana, though, at this point. Well, yeah, and I mean, that's that's going to happen if, with, oh my goodness, oh, mid wow. trade with the dive from uh, from Cassidy. Cast level 6, decides to go in and on the, the low health Sivir, but he uh, he manages to trade. That's a good play by, um, by Hank. Yeah, um, pretty good play, but you know, actually, he he will get bonus gold, I think, from Sivir from that one. He will, and yeah. he did lose the bub the double buff there. Like, Night top, Kabam flashing in, oh, misses nice. that bandage toss. Matt's gonna be yeah. able to escape out of this. Highwind rotating around. I feel like that was a little bit of a greedy play by Amumu there. Like, I don't think there was any chance of him. Either, like, even if he hit the bandage toss, I'm not sure if he would have gone down. Yeah. Well, he had six, so he might have been able to ult him, but. I don't know. I, there's no need to push that. They could have just, like, he could have, the Vladimir could have just ulted and then they could have backed up, taken the tower. Yeah, and a movement now actually counter jungling can steal the red of Razor Weapon. It's a dangerous play though, because both Sivir and Vladimir are back, and Kassadin's definitely in position to cut off Mummy if Warwick sees him. And he, he will see him, and he is going to smite this, hopefully, I think. Or actually, well, he oh, runs right by it, actually. Oh my goodness. No, unfortunate. Now he's going to run up. Pirate ult coming in. He's going to turn back yeah. around. Juke back into the bush, but so yeah. much help from Razor Weapon coming in. All turned down, trying to save himself. But Kassadin in hot oh, pursuit. And now, meanwhile, Hank just dealing tons of damage. Warwick in a lot of trouble here. Not going to be able to stand through this. Double buff actually going to go to Castle. Now he's going to turn around. Silenced is uh, Sivir. And, she's, and Hank's actually trying to commit to this because he knows he can't probably get out of this. And he will go down to Pirate. Great spell shield by Hank, but it's not going to be enough. He made uh, he made the best of a bad situation, but they do get a two for one there. And uh, double buff on Cassidy. So that could hurt them. And Vayne actually still doing, you know, uh, he's still doing a good job against the Ziggs. The Ziggs actually leading in farm now. And it's funny, every time I look bottom, there's like a roadblock and bomb slung everywhere, and they're zoned yeah. under their turret. That's kind of the advantage of it. But now, a lot of true diamonds coming out. Oh, oh Sanctified just misses speed. with that crescendo. But oh, they turn on a Cambro. All coming in from Ziggs. This is going to try to pick this up. So oh, there's those annoying heals from Soraka. True damage He's coming back on. Oh, Power code flash. not coming down. Oh, All sorts of flashes burned. Speed. Ignite actually onto Dexter. Oh, out of mana. Yeah, Otter is out of mana. Uh, great play by both, both Otter and Dexter. Uh, it's too bad he missed that zone ulti. I think that could have been a double kill if he hit. Yes, that definitely would have been just, you know, it's really, really frustrating when it's just at the tip of it, too. Yeah. You missed by, like, a pixel, and you're just like, no. Uh, however, Warwick has pink dragon now, and um, the bot lane for HRNR is, is pretty low health. He might come in with a Warwick ulti here. Yes, and that would be huge. We do have a war there, so they do see this. They will cancel it. Otter. It's like he's going to go gonna down. use a satchel charge, oh. but no, it's not going to be in time. He's going to get ignited. Pops away just a little bit. There's that hungry strike. Gonna pick up that last kill, and now we might see them shade towards dragon. Yeah, could be able to. Looks like sanctified is actually gonna back though. Interesting decision. Um, I, I mean, Vayne and Warwick could duo it, but Mummy's in the area, so that could be dangerous if they get caught off with a, a Mumu. And you can see Kabam's ready there, waiting, making sure they're not doing it. Yes, very smart play by him. Very veteran jungler. Definitely a player you want in that position. Yep. You know, this cast in, <laughs> this cast in the mid lane, he's catching back up in CS here um, by a lot, actually, because Hankem's been uh, too busy trying to kill people at mid and he's uh, 
Give it up a little bit. Right oh, here. high wind definitely caught out. Flashes, oh, fail flashes to the wall. That was a, that was kind of a bad panic flash there. He he wasn't getting it over the wall anyways. He should have just accepted the fact that he was going down and uh, saved his cooldown. Yeah, and that does happen to a lot of players when they're in that situation. You take the weird angle. I mean, flash has been nerfed a lot. Uh, yeah, the range it's, it's over the two times. But sometimes it's better just to to know that if you're going to go down. Just accept it. Yeah, and just don't take your flash and use it for another key yeah. moment. And Especially on Warwick, your, your flash is pretty much a kill with your ulti, so it's very important to save that cooldown and not not use it unless it's really for sure going to help you. Yeah, it's even more precious on a certain characters, especially like that, that need that to initiate. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, Hyrus Nova picking up a dragon off of that Hyrus Nova right now, sitting with about a 2k lead, so not super far ahead, but earlier in the game you are, the, the more uh, having a gold lead uh, means into the game. It usually means and levels too. This game, there's been a lot of uh, jungle fighting, which kind of surprises me. Warwick and Mummy both being kind of passive junglers in general, but it seems like both of them are trying to take advantage of the fact that the other is passive, and so it's ended up being super aggressive. Kind of <laughs> game early, it's very interesting. Like um, the last game in the semifinals, the first blood came at 13 minutes or so. This game, there's already nine kills, and we're not even at that point yet. Cast an inbound in a pool right before that silence, but now the silence is going to come in. Pirate all coming in. There's Heals. a heal being about. Oh, oh will I, that be I able to pick up Pirate? I think it is going to pick up Matt. It's going to be very close. Oh, oh he's barely going to survive with that pot. He's going to have the boomerang. Yeah, on the hunt, going to have a lot of rotation on this. Boss Scout trying to get away. Slow actually back on to Vlad. Picks it up with the oh. silence. And will Hank M be able to pick up this kill? They're actually spraying out, uh, running him very, very ragged here. Become very very close to it could go a double kill. Both have no mana. Yeah. Good kills here. Woo. Oh god, my bat. That was, that was oh, smart. gotta be careful of Kabam. Kabam, there's the flash. Gets onto yeah. Matt. Matt's not gonna be able to escape out of this. No alt actually yet. Pirate's actually still alive somehow. And flash onto the turret. Hank will go down, but it's gonna be slain by the I mean, turret. Um, he was watching the Cassidy and wasn't paying attention to the tower aggro, and it uh it cost him a death on Sivir there. And again, we saw Sivir flashing and dying anyways. Um, sometimes just gotta you know just that you're dead. Power yeah. was on the way. Like he was, he was 100% dead, and he, he flashed. That's just, just panic. Maybe a little bit of nerves there, not wanting to uh, give up that kill for his team here in the finals. But well, I think, I think definitely people they don't think enough about flash. I think you see a lot of players, but if you watch like the high end players, they wait so long and they're so patient. Um, what normally looks like it's like oh like they're gonna die. They should have flashed earlier. You know, like they'll be so patient to make sure. It's gonna count. It's like almost like they calculated. And very, very calculating. Great. Actually, condemn in crescendo yeah, onto Ziggs Bob. They're gonna pick up the kill there. Alt uh, inbound. Dexter can't okay. press this. But definitely, definitely a good kill. And um, with Mummy up in mid, they can, they can definitely push. Maybe take a tower here. Screw your new meta. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Boss Scout pressing frustration over the Sivir mid. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, I would be frustrated too, especially when you pick that cast and pick. It really just kind of makes you feel like, oh, great, like I totally wasted this pick. But, you know, Dexter is actually doing a great job bottom, actually uh, beating Otter out good. here. Siver comes, um, um, I don't know if they're switching lanes or if he's just coming down to cover, because.